topic is solving equations. The essential question is, how can you use what you know about building an equation in order to solve it? So to start things off, you need to know that equations have to be equal on each side of that equal sign. So what I mean by that is, if this side equaled 100, then on the other side of the equal sign, whatever happens over here has to equal 100, okay? So I could be 75 plus 25. That's really the whole definition of an equation. You know when there's an equal sign, one side is equal to the other side, so it's balanced. Here's another example. Let's see, if this side equaled negative 8 plus a negative 2, that equals negative 10. So therefore, this side has to also equal negative 10. So I can make it negative 9 plus a negative 1. Okay? So since both sides of the equal sign are equal, those are true equations. So now we're going to take it a little step further. When you solve an equation with a variable, you're trying to figure out the value of that variable. Okay? So what I mean by that, let's say that in this first example right here, instead of a plus 25, it said plus x. So your job would have to be to figure out what that value of that variable is. Because remember, the definition of a variable is an unknown number. So if it said 75 plus x equals 100, then you would know that x would have to equal 25. Sometimes it's not as straightforward as that, so I'm going to show you a way how to figure um, out how to solve equations. You just got to remember that you've got to figure out what that variable is um, so that both sides of the equal sign are equal to each other. And to help you do that when there's a variable in an equation, you will need to use inverse operations. Inverse operations will help you unbuild the equation to find the value of that variable. So it says solve the following equations, and you'll see that it's blank. And the reason that it's blank is because I want you to see how I build it, because that will help you um, build it yourself and then eventually unbuild it, okay? And you're probably really confused about what I'm talking about, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So as I'm building this variable, or this equation, I'm gonna start with the variable of y, and then I'm gonna multiply it by eight. I know I'm multiplying by eight because see how this y has that coefficient of eight right in front of it? When they're smushed together like that, that means multiply, okay? It means eight times y. And then I'm gonna add 20, and that, whole situation right there, 8 times y plus 20, that's going to equal 44. So your job is to figure out what number y could be to where when I multiply that value by 8 and then I add 20, it's going to equal 44. And some of you may already have figured out what y is just by looking at it, but some of you, it might not be as straightforward. So that's why I'm going to show you this building technique, okay? So when I built this equation, I obviously started with y. Then the next thing I did was multiply it by 8. And then after that, we added 20. Okay. Now we're going to unbuild this equation in order to solve it. And like it says above, we got to use inverse operations. So the inverse operation of plus 20 is to subtract 20. And you not only have to record it right here to help you um, know what to do, you also have to go back to that equation. So I'm going to uh, subtract 20 from both sides of that equal sign. So I wouldn't subtract 20 underneath the 8y because 20 and 8y are not like terms, or negative 20 and 8y are not like terms, but right here they are because 20 is a constant. So I'm going to subtract 20 over here and on the other side of that equal sign. Okay. <clears throat> 20 take away 20 is 0, so I want you to write the 0 right through it, okay? Don't write it underneath it because we're going to need that room later on. 44 subtract 20 is 24, okay? Bring down that equal sign, 
Now that's zero, so you don't need to bring that down because there's already something over here on the other side of that equal sign. Um, so bring down your 8y. Okay? All right, now that you've rewritten it, now you need to go back up this little old like ladder thing, I guess, is what I call it. The inverse operation of multiply is to divide. So you're going to divide both sides by 8. Look how I wrote divide. Divide like that. Okay? So I'm going to divide by 8 over here. Divide by 8 over here. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1 times y is 1y. But you could just write y because there's only one y right there, right? And then bring down your equal sign. 24 divided by 8 is 3. So now that we have um, just y is equal to 3, that's going to be my answer. However, we should check it to make sure it's correct. So I left a space over here to check it. And this is how you check it. So I want you to check it on every assessment at least, okay, to make sure you did it correctly. So what that involves is you write that original equation. I wrote it in green, so I'm going to write it. But instead of putting the y right there, I need to substitute that 3 right there. And if you put it right there, it kind of looks silly because it says 83. But I want you to recall that this means multiply. So I have to go 8 times whatever y is. So it's really 8 times 3. And you should know that the parentheses like that, that means multiply. Okay? And then we have to add 20. And that should equal 44. Okay? We'll multiply this right here. 8 times 3 is 24 add 20, and that should equal 44 because of the definition of an equation. Okay, so let's see, 24 plus 20, that is 44, and that other side equals 44. And now that you see that once you've substituted that value in, both sides of that equation are true, we know that that's the answer and you should circle it. Okay, for this summary down here, I want you to rewrite and solve number one. So rewrite that, what I have in green, and solve it. Try to keep this covered up to see if you could do it without peeking. Okay. Please make sure you actually rewrite it and solve it. Some of you have just been writing rewrite and solve number one and then you don't do anything. So I haven't been giving you any points. So make sure you do what it says. <clears throat> now on to back. All right, Let's watch how I build this, okay? Because when, when you feel comfortable enough, you're going to pause the video and you're going to try to do it yourself to solve it. So I'm going to start with the variable. This time I'll start with x. Then I'm going to multiply it by 1 half. And then subtract 3. That's going to equal 2. Okay? So now when you build your equation, start with that variable. And then you multiply it by 1 half. Don't forget to in include that um, that operation that you do. Then we subtracted 3. The arrows mean that this is the next step. We start with x, then the next step was you multiply it by a half, and then we the next step was subtracting 3. All right. Inverse operations. Inverse operation of subtract 3 is to add 3. Make sure to do it on both sides of that equal sign. Here and over here. Not here and here. No, no, no. It's here and here. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 2 plus 3 is 5. Now you're going to bring everything down that's still there. That equal sign is still there, and that 1 half x is still there. 1 half times x, okay? Now we're going to go on back up. And the inverse operation multiply by half is to divide by 1 half. And that may look a little bit crazy to you, but we're just, that's what you do. So you're going to divide by 1 half. Divide by 1 half. 1 half divided by 1 half is 1, because any number divided by itself is 1. 1 times x is x. 5 divided by 1 half. And if you're like, I don't know how to do that, um, maybe off to the side right here uh, you could write it better. So 5 divided by 1 half. And what you've learned in the past is maybe keep change flip. So keep that first number, change division to multiplication, and flip that next term, okay? 5 times 2 is 10, 1 times 1 is 1, so it's really 10 divided by 1, which is 10. So 5 divided by 1 half 
is 10. Now before I circle it, I want to make sure I check it. So you rewrite that original problem that was written in green, and instead of putting the x there, you're going to substitute that value of 10 right there, and remember, that means multiply. Okay, half of 10. And if you're like, I don't know how to do that, remember, you can just multiply it like this. So 1 times 10 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2. Then subtract 3, and that should equal 2. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Then subtract your 3. 5 subtract 3, that does equal 2. And this side equals 2. So since both sides of that equal sign are true after I've substituted that value in, we know that 10 is the correct answer. Number three, watch how I build this one. Start with y, then I'm going to add 1, then I'm going to divide that by 3. That should equal 2. So your job is to figure out what the value of y is. To when you find out what y is, add 1 to it, then divide by 3, that side's going to equal 2. So let's go ahead and build it. Start with y. Then I added 1, and then we divided by 3. Please do your inverse operations. The inverse operation of dividing by 3 is to multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply this side by 3 and this side by 3. Okay? So it's going to be 3 times all this junk right there. So luckily you know the distributive property. So 3 times y is 3y. 3 times 1, 3 times a positive 1 is a positive 3, and that was all divided by 3, okay? 2 times 3 is 6, and before I could keep going up, I know that, I mean, you should know that you could totally simplify this right here. 3y divided by 3 is 1y, or y, same thing, and then positive 3 divided by 3 is a positive 1, and that will equal 6. Okay, now that it's all simplified looking like that, go on back up that ladder. Inverse operation on plus 1 is to subtract 1, and you'll do that on both sides of that equal sign. Okay, 1 take away 1 is 0, 6 take away 1 is 5, so I'm left with 1y, or you could just write y, same thing, equals 5. Okay, before I circle it, I want to check it. So rewrite the green stuff, but instead of writing the letter Y, you want to put the 5 in its place. That's called substitution. Okay, 5 plus 1 is 6, then divide by 3. 6 divided by 3, well that's 2. 2 equals 2. So since that's a balanced equation, both sides equal each other, that's the correct answer. All right, on to number 4. Watch how I build it, please gonna start with x. I'm gonna multiply it by negative 4 and then I'm gonna add 6 to it because that's a positive 6. That's gonna equal negative 10. So you're used to seeing it where the variable is on the left side of the equal sign. Sometimes you're gonna see it on the right hand side of the equal sign and that's no reason to freak out, okay? Do it the same way. Start with x, multiply it by negative 4, then we added 6. An arrow. Okay, inverse operation of plus 6 is to subtract 6, and you're going to do that to both sides of that equal sign. 6 subtract 6 is 0. Negative 10 subtract 6 is negative 16. Okay, bring everything down. Please bring down that negative 4x. Don't just bring down the 4x. Look at the symbol in front of it, okay? Don't forget that. That's a common mistake that many people seem to do. Okay, back on up. Inverse operation to multiply by negative 4 is to divide by negative 4. So divide both sides by negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, because any number divided by itself is 1. 1 times x is 1x, or x, same thing. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, so negative 16 divided by negative 4 is a positive 4. So 4 equals x, or you could say x equals 4, same thing. So let's check that. Um, substitute your value values your value in for x. Okay, so I have negative four times four is negative sixteen. 
then bring down your 6. 6 take away 16 is negative 10, and that equals negative 10 over there. So that's correct. The value of x is 4. Because when I put that 4 in there, both sides are equal. It's a definition of an equation. All right, next one. Number 5, watch how I build it. I'm going to start with x. Then I'm going to multiply it by negative 3. And then we're going to subtract 14. And that's going to equal negative 2. Okay, go ahead and build it. Start with x. We multiplied it by negative 3. And after that, we subtracted 14. Okay, please use inverse operations. Do it to both sides of the equal sign. Opposite or inverse operation minus 14 is to add 14. Negative 14 plus 14 is 0. Negative 2 plus 14 is 12. Bring down your negative 3x. Okay, now go on back up. Inverse operation of multiply by negative 3 is to divide by negative 3. Do that to both sides of that equal sign, please. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. 1 times x is 1x, or x, same thing. Positive divided by negative is a negative, so 12 divided by negative 3 is a negative 4. All right, let's check it before you circle it. So rewrite that um, original equation, and then substitute that value in for x. Okay, so right here, you got to multiply. Negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12. Okay, bring everything else down. Negative 14 plus 12 is negative 2. Negative 2 equals negative 2, so that's correct. So here's how to tell if you're wrong. Let's say when you substitute it in, on this side you got like negative 7 and this side was negative 2. When, the bo when both sides don't equal each other, that means it's wrong. So either you messed up when you were checking it or you messed up over here. But the bottom line is, if those sides don't equal, you have more investigating to do and you should probably um, look at what you're doing wrong, especially if it's an assessment. Because this is a nice little piece of insurance right here to make sure you get this correct. So if there's any dilemma where they don't equal each other, you know you messed up and you know you're going to get that wrong on, on an assessment. So you want to double check and pay more close attention to that, okay? All right, number six. If you're like, what? There's no numbers. There's no number six. Yep, you're going to write it in because I want you to do this one, okay? So watch how it's built. Let's use the variable of y, okay? That y, and then we're going to divide it by 8. And then we'll add 25 to it. And that value is equal to 20. Pause the video right now and try to solve that yourself. Here's how you solve it. Started with y, then we oh, divided it by 8, then after that, you added 25. <clears throat> Use inverse operations to solve it. Inverse operation plus 25 is to subtract 25. Do that to both sides of that equal sign. 25 take away 25 is 0, write the 0 right through it. 20 take away 25 is negative 5. Bring everything down. Bring down your y divided by 8. Now go on back up. Inverse operation divided by 8 is to multiply by 8. So you're going to do that to both sides of that equal sign. Times 8 times 8. Oh, so we got a fraction situation here. So 8 times y is 8y. 1 times 8 is 8. Um, negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. You should know that 8, remember it was divide, uh, multiply. So 8 divided by 8, that's 1. So 1y, or y, same thing, equals negative 40. Huh. So now go ahead and check it. Rewrite that original equation, substitute that negative 40 in. Okay, negative 40 divided by 8, so that's a negative divided by positive would give me a negative answer. So negative 5 plus 25 equals 20. Negative 5 plus 25 is 20. So since both sides of that equal sign are, it's true, you know, 
that's the correct answer. Okay, bye.